and welcome to Europa Universalist 4. I am Lord Forrest here with another country guide. This time I requested a guide for Norway. So Norway, sadly, for the Norwegians and all the people who think Norway and all its fjords are rather awesome, is uh, a relatively unplayed country in Europa. But here's a brief guide on what to do as them. This is, of course, the 1444 start. Norway starts in the Kalmar Union under Denmark, along with Sweden and the vassal Holstein, which is a vassal of Denmark. Um, ironically, Sweden, at, Sweden has a much harder time breaking free of Denmark than Norway does. Um, so if you've watched the Sweden guide, you know that uh, you have to seek a lot of outside alliances to survive. However, as Norway, you can find Sweden, who's almost rebellious at 50% liberty desire, allied to them, and together you might have enough to take out Denmark, assuming they don't have tons of allies. So, um, Norway, I'm not going to go terribly into the Norwegian independence wars, because pretty much if you get Sweden, maybe England or somebody, you've got a really good shot of getting free, because Denmark can barely fight Sweden as it is, let alone having you turn against them as well. Um, Norway, unfortunately for you outside of it, only has 84 development, making them a despite their size on the map, a relatively poor country, um, at least at this period of time. The other thing that will be problematic for you is all of their land, with the exception of, I think, one, maybe, uh, like, two provinces, is all woods, hills, mountains, forests, thus incurring a development cost, which means it's going to be very hard for you to develop Norwegian lands on their own into a great powerhouse. They do have one grassland province here they can use, plus their capital will get cheaper development due to being a capital city, but um, overall it's not much. However, Norway, Norway has quite a few events that will fire and give their actual lands development, uh, mostly relations with other countries, migrations to the Netherlands, migrations to Scotland, etc. Uh, or prospectors for mining stuff. Usually you can get events that will change some of your provinces to like iron or copper and stuff, which is relatively cool and probably all together will give you at most 20 development. So clearly Norway has to expand. Um, luckily if you're allied to Sweden, you and Sweden together are pretty strong. You can try invading if Novgorod survives uh, this whole area up here. and. Uh, I actually don't know what this is. Modern day Russia, pretty much. And uh, it's not good land, but it would allow you to expand for this way. You and Sweden together are actually quite a powerhouse. Sweden is Sweden is overpowered, um, so they can help a lot. I advise you keeping as an ally. On the other hand, once you break free from Denmark, you could try turning on and killing Sweden, which would be tough because they are larger, have better military ideas, and I think have a larger force limit than you do. Because once you're free, you'll have up to like 13 they have like 16 to start, let alone once they get independent. However, Norway does have some nice little ideas that can assist you. Uh, you've got National Sailors Modder, plus 25%, um, plus 10% ship durability, and then you get plus 20% morale of navies. This means just from these, those two traditions and that idea alone, you probably have the potential to have the strongest navy in the world. The only one that's close would be England, or maybe the Dutch give or take some stuff. But regardless, you can field quite a large navy for your size, and uh, you'll not have to worry immensely about sailors, since most all of your provinces, I think, except for one, <laughs> to start border the ocean, you're going to have a fairly nice sailor pool. However, of course, your development's rather low, so that doesn't help you that much on that end. Um, your next idea is you've got, this is one of the best ideas in the game, sadly no one plays Norway. You have Call of Our Forefathers, which allows you to get explorers and conquistadors and also boosts your colonial range. This would actually encourage Norway to colonize. Um, in fact, I recommend that as one of the easiest ways to expand. Uh, you want to try and go for Canada and mostly uh, North America, because all the South American trade nodes you don't have access to, <laughs> um, and you won't ever really have access to. The only trade node you can really access is either Lubeck or the North Sea, of which the North Sea is probably your best one to go for, but a lot of that's located in Scotland and Ireland as well. So, 
it's a bit difficult, but Colonial Nations are a good way to expand. The Free Conquistadors is nice and the Explorers, but I would actually be more along the lines of the bonus Colonial range is amazing. Uh, you also get another Free Colonist, so without technically even needing to take Exploration or uh, Expansion ideas, you can colonize, which is... I can't think of another country offhand that has those two bonuses put together. Um, the closest might be the Russians, who can get Cossack Explorers, and Portugal, uh, and um, I think it's Castile that just gets a free settler. Um, but it makes them one of the stronger colonial ideas. Plus, you get ship costs cheaper, global trade power, eh, good, but kind of a low percentage. Production efficiency, which is nice, but you get this right new sagas for a yearly prestige and a tiny, tiny bit of discipline. But then you also get trade steering, which means if you can steer if you've colonized the new world you colonize what modern day canada is in that whole region uh you can actually force a fair amount of trade for up through towards the north sea to finance whatever norway wants to do with it um my opinion though is you do start exploration ideas um you start exploration ideas you get quests for the new world allow recruitment of explorers and conquistadors which kind of weakens this idea to some degree but once you get the plus 50 colonial range due to overseas expansion plus the 33 percent colonial range here plus the 115 additional colonial range from hitting level 7 diplotech you can colonize i think all the way down to the caribbean um it's pretty ridiculous i experimented with a little bit and it's really strong um after that, obviously, if you want to colonize, you want to hit expansion, you probably want to hit espionage or influence, etc. For your starting idea, if you can't, if you don't feel free to break free of Denmark, I recommend you probably take defensive ideas. Early on from my playing the game, I found that the 15% morale early on matters more than the plus 10% infantry combat or the massive amount of manpower you get here. You have a very small move small pool of manpower which you have to be aware of um, mercenaries might be your best friend in a war with denmark you can afford them early on because you don't have a lot of army tradition or army professionalism uh, after that you really if you're going to do militaristic stuff you kind of need to hit quantity at some point but quality is going to be really key because uh, since you've got a low manpower you'll have a low force of it you have to hit far above your weight in combat so the higher modifiers you can stack the better off you are um, luckily for you um, the, in terms of cultural stuff you're pretty lucky because there are several major single culture groups in fact all of scandinavia counts in the whole nordic group which means they're all acceptable cultures um, which will help with your initial expansion if you try and take on sweden or the danes and expand into finland or the sami region up there Outside of that, uh, obviously, if you're trying to expand south, you're going to run across the HRE, which is hard. You try to expand east, you're going to run across Muscovy, Novgorod, Russia, that whole mess. And the coast usually will be taken by Poland and Lithuania, which actually means one of the other really good militaristic expansion paths for Norway is Scotland. You control the Orkney Islands up here. And uh, there will be an event where you can give the islands to Scotland. Um, in exchange for ending a historical feud with Scotland. On the other hand, if you refuse to give them back to Scotland, you'll get a claim or uh, claims on some of the islands of Scotland, which will actually make it fairly easy for you to invade. The trick, of course, would be to land your troops up here on this island, then declare war and march your troops over, rather than trying to land them once the war has started. Uh, if you're going to do that, you have to beat England there. You also have to be careful that Scotland isn't allied to France. But if you remember what I said about Norway having a fairly powerful navy, you do have three heavy ships starting out. Um, and you can easily build a couple more, or you can even get some galleys, which I wouldn't recommend. Heavy ships are stronger. Um, but you can easily take over at least Scotland. And once you take over Scotland, if England has an Ireland's just ripe for the taking, and if you do that rapidly enough, you can pretty much accumulate the entire North Sea trade node under your control, um, which is huge, especially if you're then going to try and colonize and steer trade to this region. Um, once you've done all that, you're probably large enough with an ally to take on England. Um, Scotland, the reason they can't is they're just not big enough, but you add Norway's development in, 
and you're starting to look at a si uh, army and force that can take on Scotland, especially if you're allied to Sweden. Um, plus you have the navy to compete with England, but you can easily overrun England and take over the English Isles, plus Norway have their own little uh, North Sea Empire, like historically occurred, but I think that also included Denmark and Sweden. And uh, once you know that, you can obviously shift trade towards the English Channel and stuff. There's an achievement for Norway called Norwegian Wood. I think it's own all... Um, oh, I think it's like uh, naval supply provinces or something. Or I think it's naval supply provinces, um, which is really hard. So I've gotten nowhere near it. But um, yeah, essentially that's your two choices in Norway. One, get real militaristic and try and conquer the English Isles, maybe Sweden, Denmark, that whole region. Um, or break free with Sweden, which you're going to want to do anyway, and then colonize the New World and just steer trade. Uh, which also means if you're going to do that, you want to get trade ideas. The additional trade steering, 25% stacked on your 20% trade steering means you'll be able to shift a lot more trade than one would expect. Plus the additional merchants, you can build quite a trade empire up here as Norway. Uh, not a country I'd recommend to take to try and conquer the world, but... Uh, as is shown by poor tiny little Rukuyu over near China and people having conquered the world with them, you can take any nation to conquer the world in Europa. So uh, essentially that's it. Uh, you probably want to take Protestantism when it fires or not, really up to you. Uh, none of your events are major. You don't have any unique real, per se disasters, uh, tech stuff. You're going to be behind. Uh, I would say a lot of the game because most of the institutions will spawn in Central Europe and you're far away from it with low development, but uh, it's entirely possible for you to expand. Uh, I had a little bit of fun when I was messing around with them for this guide, having never played a full campaign with them before. Um, I'm pretty sure that's about it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't think of much else in Norway. I'm relatively disappointed they haven't had a, a rework like Denmark has. Um, Sweden kind of had a rework. Uh, Norway really could use a bit of a rework um, along with like Scotland and stuff to make this area a little bit more interesting outside of England, Sweden, and Denmark. So that's it for this guide. If you've got any other guides you want me to do or just any questions, please leave them below in the comments. I will answer them. I like doing guides for this game. I like playing it. I have Let's Plays of this and other games on the rest of my channel, so please subscribe and watch those if you enjoyed this, and I will see you all in another video. Bye!